I'm Diane Lang, and I'm here today to share a book I've written with you. It's called Fur Feather Fin, All of Us Are Kin. Um, and by that I mean, kin is kind of an old-fashioned word, and it means relatives. It means who we're related to. Your cousins are your kin, and your brother and sister are your kin. Um, so we're not cousins with octopus and eels and um, what are the other animals on here, various birds, seahorse. Um, no, but we share the world with them, and we have a lot in common with them. We all want to stay safe. We all want to take care of our young. We want to get food. We want to have clean water. And so we have so much in common, and we need each other. So I would say that we are kin. So I'm going to read this book to you today. I wish I could be with you in person, but I am doing this at the time that we're all staying home and staying safe. So not for today. So here's how it starts. All animals on earth are kin, well, not the same outside or in. Some we stroke with loving hand, some we don't yet understand. But we're all linked in families with variations such as these. First of all, I'll start with the group that we are part of, and you probably know what that is. Milk to drink and furry hide, mammals keep warm from inside. Their babies are not hatched, they're born, no matter how their fur is worn. All need a parent when they're new. Like humans, yes, we're mammals too. And then we have the birds, the birds we love so much. Feathers keep birds warm and dry, giving them the shape to fly. Some will soar, some probe the sand. Flightless ones live life on land. Some seek nectar in each bloom. Those who hunt will watch, then zoom. The snowy owl here is zooming down on the lemming. Amphibians. You've probably heard of amphibians. At least you've heard of frogs and toads. Changing body, smooth, moist skin, that is an amphibian. Metamorphosis, the road for changing tadpole into toad. They're a frog or newt, and at the end, a whole new suit. So amphibians are the wet ones. The dry ones are the reptiles. Reptiles dry and scaly skin keeps the warmth from outside in. Snakes and lizards seek the sun, as basking turtles long have done. Some have a smooth and graceful glide. Some run or climb or dig to hide. That lizard is hiding from the roadrunner. And roadrunners are kind of famous for eating reptiles, including the rattlesnakes. A roadrunner can whack a rattlesnake faster than a rattlesnake can bite a roadrunner. Pretty interesting. Now I'm going to talk about uh, the big group with a big name for all of them, arthropods. Arthropods mean insects and spiders and scorpions and even lobsters. So here's about arthropods. Arthropods have hard outsides, jointed legs, and varied lives. Some will live beneath the seas while others lightly ride the breeze, from insects chewing on a stem to spiders who are eating them. Now we need insects. We definitely need insects. They pollinate our food, our food crops. They also eat dead plants and animals so that the nutrients can return to the soil. Insects are very important, but we don't want too many, and we would be need deep in insects if it weren't for spiders, because that's what spiders eat. So spiders are our little eight-legged heroes. Now, let's get in the water a little bit. Fish have bones plus gills to get oxygen from where it's wet. Some have shapes somewhat alike, like salmon, trout, catfish, or pike, but some are shaped a different way. This could be surprising to you. It was surprising to me when I learned. Such as seahorse, eel, or ray. They have gills and they have bones and they're fish. Now there are other animals living in the water, not just fish. And so I kind of put them all together. So there's so many different kinds 
um, that I just called the water dwellers. More water dwellers live offshore in tidal pools on ocean floor. Some cling to rocks while some float free, our sandy, salty family, with tentacles or fins or spines. Life underwater intertwines. Now in this picture, the uh, giant squid is intertwining with the whale, probably trying to get away from it. But what I also meant by inter intertwining was how um, all of the ecosystem under the water, just like up here on land, needs each other and intertwines. Now, here's a maybe even, maybe not a bigger word, but a more unusual word. I'm going to talk about detritivores. It's a whole different kind, many, many different kinds of animals who um, turn dead stuff um, in the forest and elsewhere into new healthy soil. That means worms and snails and beetles and many kinds of bugs. And so I just, I call them all detritivores. Detritivores, so oft forgotten, dine on things both dead and rotten. Worms and bugs make their dessert of rot into the richest dirt, underground or deep in bark. They're heroes of the damp and dark. We need our detritivores. We need all of this. From lofty height to humble base, every creature has a place, as well as needs like food, fresh air, a place of safety, nest, or lair. And while we're different here on earth, in eating, moving, giving birth, common things make us complete. Minds that work and hearts that beat. That's what makes us all kin. And that's why we as people can learn more about all the other kinds of animals and understand how important they are uh, to the world appreciate them, love the ones you want, um, acknowledge the others, but just know that they're all important. Fur, feather, fin, all of us are kin. <laughs>